Hey parents, if you have been trying to help your child and you feel stuck and you're really wanting to try different strategies but it feels overwhelming and it feels like you can't get anywhere, this video is for you. This video, my, my name is Seth Perlman, I'm an executive function coach out of Boulder, Colorado, and um, this video is called Spoke Theory and Patient Persistence. And what I'm going to tell you about is this theory that I have called Spoke Theory. So as a person, I tend to have these theories, and I like to name them, and one of them is called Spoke Theory. And let me give you some background for this. So basically, we just had an executive function online conference. And what happened was that many experts from all over the place came in and shared their wisdom with families. There are almost 10,000 families from all over the place who were looking for answers with executive function. Some of these parents had young children, some had college age kids. There was the whole gamut, all types of kids. Uh, um, that you can imagine, but the one thing that they have in common is that all of them in some uh, way, shape, or form struggle with executive function. What does that mean? It means that these kids struggle to execute, to get important things done that need to be done in order to plant seeds for them to have a great future. And one of the coolest things about this summit was that the parents got to hear from all of these different people, but they all said a lot of the same ideas just using different models or different names. And in this uh, video right here, right now, I'm going to read an email from a parent to you where there was a win that happened with her and her child. And I'm going to talk about how that relates to what I call spoke theory. So let me start with this email here. So I thought I would give an update from yesterday and this is for the win exclamation point is how it starts. After my brief rant slash post, we have a Facebook group where she posted, which was self-care and self-rag. So she was doing some self-care for herself by ranting this. I was able to regroup. I created a safe space for my son who said, quote, I hate homework. I told him I was not going to get mad over homework anymore. I started with a two minute timer and stuck to it. I think what she means is they started doing working on the homework. We were able to get four out of five pages done over several short sessions. Then we were exhausted and we went for a walk to clear our heads. I took notes along the way about page five. This morning, uh, I booked an appointment with him and stuck to it, meaning she booked an appointment to speak to him, to connect with him. Um, for once, we didn't start with a fight. Uh, negotiation or negativity. I had set up some visual prompts in the doc and he, he actually went through it like a boss. So she took the responsibility off of her and she scaffolded it for, scaffolded it for him by giving him the cues, but he's the one who went through it. Finished the whole thing in 20 minutes. Thank you. Uh, Seth Stewart Gretchen and the person who suggested the appointment. Sorry, th these are some of the speakers. I can't recall who it was and I can't believe it worked. Also to Beth who told me about the summit and helped me to prepare for the school year and empowered me to be proactive. So one of the key ideas for the summit was for proactive parents. My takeaway from the summit is life changing. I followed up on a couple of promises and connected with his currency. So now she's talking about her son again. I followed up with a couple of promises she had made to him and connected with his currency, which means that they played magic for an hour, Ugh, but he loved it. This afternoon, our family went go-karting and we had an ice cream. This is a nice place to be, happy face. So this mom, Mel Melanie, wrote this um, note. And so what I want to do is break down for you parents some of what is happening in this note and why it's so powerful. So first of all, I want you to notice that she starts this off in saying this is for the win. And I want to make it very, very, very clear to you that in this note, nothing in the win says anything about grades or test scores or anything like that. So we are so programmed in our culture to really think in terms of wins with the data. And so often what really matters to us is beyond the data. What really mattered here and what I think is probably most powerful in this whole situation is the very last sentence where it says, this afternoon our family went go-karting and had an ice cream. This is a nice place to be. The, the, the win is having this connection, having moved through this experience with the child and having the connection with the family, having the relationship, which is the most important thing. Like that's the win. She got to really experience being present with 
the family and enjoying the family. That's the big win. But how did this win happen? So I just want to make clear that this is not about the grades and the test scores, that look at what the win really is, at least she might define it differently, but at least from my reading into this, that's what I think the big win is. Now there are lots of small wins, and I want to talk about spoke theory. So one of the things that we hear heard on the summit is that there's iceberg theory and then spoke theory. I don't believe I mentioned it once on the summit, um, but spoke theory is just like iceberg theory. Iceberg theory is that you have the tip of the iceberg, which is what we see, that the grades are falling apart, that there's homework battles, that the kid's procrastinating, or whatever. That That's the tip of the iceberg. What we want to ask, if we really want to help the child, is what's going on beneath the the tip of the iceberg and one of the things that I say is we need to attack it from many different angles and a lot of people want a linear step-by-step -step process that's just going to help you figure out exactly what to do to help your child and it's not that it's messy so what spoke theory says is that we attack it from many different angles so I want you to imagine a bicycle wheel with a bunch of different spokes on it and some of the spokes are broken, some have fallen off completely, some are bent. Now, what spoke theory would suggest is that we need to attack it from many different angles. And again, this is not a linear step-by-step -step thing. If you have a real bicycle tire with uh, spokes on it that need repaired or that need to be what's called tuned, then what happens is it doesn't matter which one you start with. You just start where you start. And people are really want to start at the right place. And with spoke theory, you're not worried about it. You're just starting where you're starting now in this particular case what she said and I, I want to go through how she attacked it from many different angles so that you can be really clear on how she did this and you can apply this to your own life now I'm not suggesting that you apply it in the same way you can start wherever you want but I do want to point out that she started somewhere and she attacked it from multiple different angles she said after my brief rant which was self-care or self-reg. So she needed to express what was going on in her mind, and she did that through writing a post. That is where she started, was with self, what she called self-care and her own self-regulation. She started with taking care of herself first in this case, and she said she was able to re regroup. And then she said she created a safe space for her son who said, I hate home homework. So the next thing that happens is her kid says, I hate homework, and she's creating a place where she's not saying, oh, you shouldn't hate homework, or we're going to do it anyway, but she created a safe space for him and said, hey, I'm not going to get mad at homework anymore. Um, and then she created some structure, and an another spoke was that she used the timer, and she chunked it down to a very small bite-sized piece, two minutes on the timer and stuck to it. And then they got four or five several short sessions. Now, for those of you parents listening to this and you're thinking, oh my gosh, that's exhausting. I can't imagine doing two minute sessions, four or five of them, you know, and just how frustratingly long that would take and to stay on top of that. You know, I just want my kid to be able to sit down and do their homework. Well, they will get there. This is planting seeds. What Melanie is doing is she is really scaffolding and creating a structure. She can then do what I call increase the threshold. So she can turn those two minutes into three minutes or five minutes or ten minutes. Uh, the focus will get better. The um, resistance that her child is going through that says, I hate homework, I don't even want to start, will lessen in time. Okay, There is a domino effect. You have to trust the process. Um, yes, it's hard. It's messy. It takes a long time. It takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of forethought. It takes a lot of attacking it from the different angles. But don't stop. I'm telling you. I know that some of you watching this are in extremely, extremely frustrating circumstances where it feels like a really big uphill battle. Do not give up. This stuff works. Keep attacking it from multiple angles. Every tiny micro win counts and matters and is a win. She says, then we were exhausted and went for a walk to clear our heads. She noticed that they were exhausted and did something about it. Instead of just pushing through and let's finish this, let's take a walk and clear our heads. Um, this morning she booked an appointment. Hey, and, and this is what I call a pre-talk. Uh, somebody else calls it an appointment from the summit. Hey, we're going to have a talk today. We're going to talk about this for a couple minutes. Just want you to know this is coming. That allows her child to be mentally prepared and think about it. So she's like prepping him for it so he can be ready for this. Um, she set up visual prompts, etc. I'm not going to go through the rest of this um, 
But the point is, is what I was talking about before. What I want you to walk away from this video with is an idea in your head that the, the, this is not a linear step-by-step -step process that we're going to work on spoke theory and you're just going to start you don't have to have the perfect place to start you're just going to start wherever you start whether it's with self-care whether it's with setting an appointment whether it whatever whether it's doing the cleaning out the backpack whether it's just connecting with your child whatever it is you're just going to pick a spoke and get started and you're going to attack it from multiple different angles and do everything in your toolkit however limited or expansive your your toolkit may be for helping your child you're just going to do what you can do in your toolkit uh, just the very best that you can do today that's it you're going to do spoke theory and then I said in patient persistence be patient and persist patiently persist and that equals a win and you might have multiple micro wins today you might have a big win today but I just want to really leave you with that today just want to encourage you um, to just try spoke theory, be patient and persistent, and don't give up. Again, my name is Seth Crow. I'm an executive function coach out of Boulder, Colorado. I'm really glad you're here today. I hope this was helpful for you. If you haven't thumb, gave it a thumbs up on YouTube, uh, go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you like this. If this was helpful to you, you can subscribe on YouTube and you can subscribe on my site, sethperler.com. And you can figure out what the Executive Function Summit is if you want. Look at executivefunctionsummit.com. Anyhow, that's all I got for you today. If you want to leave a comment, share this with someone, that'd be fantastic. Uh, I will see you next week. Take care.